So it's got to have come then from the environment. Now, you, we know of one case for sure where the, the chemtrail fibers were found and you could maybe put it together. I there was knew there two was a cases. Connection. I oh, knew there was And also Lily. And yes. Lily. Okay. But, but there are chemtrails everywhere all the time. Correct. And they could have other chemicals in it. But one key that what, we're, what I'm calling the smart dust, where, where smart dust is a very, very small particle at nano size that has a specific function. This looks like if you look at certain times of the day and you see dust, but it's not dust. It's like an iridescent glitter, very specifically different than gl regular household dust. Yeah. And this would be in areas we, where, where... We have seen that. You know, a doctor, what, what, uh, we, I got one of those 10 million uh, watt uh, spotlights. You go out at night and point it up to the sky, and you can't believe what's floating in the air. I mean, it's, it's really disgusting. Right, and if you're seeing this iridescence, which looks like just like glitter, that is um, a um, engineered dust or smart dust type uh, material versus regular household dust or that does not reflect back. So here comes the conspiracy theory. If, uh, if, if, if Morgellons or Morgellons is related to chemtrails and it's coming out of the spray from airplanes, is there some grand plan to uh, uh, get this stuff into human beings? Well, it, I don't know if it was a plan or anything, but I will say that all of us have been exposed, all animals, all life forms on this planet. Uh, it's just a matter of what our genetic makeup is, what we have been chemically poisoned with uh, as an industry, oh, meaning man. working in industry versus uh, living in certain polluted areas that is allowing this to manifest more rapidly in individuals than ourselves. Now, is this considered, like, if, if you're handling this, you must be very careful. Is it something that could burrow its way in, like, like contagious? Well... I don't consider it contagious because what I've observed is that it has to have a specific chemical composition and if, uh, like I'll give you an example, like the ones where they have the lesions, where they have the discolorization of the skin, they have a lot of porphyria in their body which is from pyrroles and thus chemical composition of pyrroles and um, I, I basically know that it's a, uh, you know, man-made machine, as I call it. So it's not going to be likely passed from person to person. It's no, they're going to have to get the, it from the thing is, and why people can, I'm going to call it, be exposed and get it from other individuals, is that those same people may be exposed to the same chemicals that this other person has been exposed to. Got you. Yeah, that allows you know, it to be a gross media for these assemblers or whatever is going on. Gotcha. I don't care if it's contagious. I mean, we have a picture there. I think it's number seven. Of if if, if my, my old mother had that on her lip, I ain't getting anywhere near her. I'm sorry. <laughs> well, yeah, it, it must. It's it must. very hard. And also, um, being that there's technology where um, these what we call liquid crystals, meaning that they're crystals where they have different DNA, just as I said earlier in uh, my early papers and other shows that I've been on, where they have DNA plasmids. These DNA plasmids can be certain bacterias, sea anemones, um, shark venom, whatever it may be, okay? But it's where other scientists may not have found it or anything and call it parasites or whatever they may want to call it because they never were able to get a whole matter of it, meaning a whole organism. Mm. So they're just going to compare it to a parasite or, or think that it is a right, parasite. But I would like to see some of them, you know, do some DNA or something analysis. Sure. Doctors. Now, what's the CDC? I mean, we, we did, but we only got chemicals. You right. Know? Right. What does the CDC do, or are they doing anything about this? I, I honestly don't know. Mm. I know in the very beginning, which was way back in September, October of 2006, they were going to do a study in California. Then they changed it to do it and go back to Atlanta, and then do it out of Texas. But to my knowledge, I have not heard anything that they've done anything. Doctor, how many people? Yeah. How many people? Pardon. It's okay. How many people are you? Uh, estimating uh, have this affliction in the just in the United Early, States? 
early on when uh, the end of the statistics at the first of the year were over 60,000 in the United States, 100,000 worldwide, with an expansion rate of 1,000 a day globally. Oh, oh my yeah. word. Yeah. It, now, you said 60,000 in the U.S. Is there any specific part of the country? Mm -hmm. It seems more likely... 26% is in Southern California. Of the other majority is in Texas and Florida, but it is spreading. It is uh, there is a relationship to um, I'm going to call it uh, specific cities that uh, have uh, higher incidence. And you know, a friend of ours uh, who's a chemtrail expert in Los Angeles says the uh, the chemtrail spraying there is just out of control. It's, uh, it's amazing. Do we have to do a break? Yeah, we have to do a break. Yeah. We're going to take just a, another a short break. And when we come back, see if there's something we can do to help people prevent this affliction. Stay tuned. We'll be right back with Dr. Hildegard Staninger. Okay, we had another question from the control booth, and I think this is a pretty good one. If these um, fibers or whatever they are, are, are nano robots, are falling from the sky somehow, can they somehow embed themselves in plants? Has there been any evidence so that when we ate something that had landed on, we could get it that way? Yes, there has been oh, evidence no. uh, early on from plants, animals, uh, even seafood. Oh, seafood. for heaven's sake. Meaning it's, it's global. Uh, it is raining. Uh, once you've seen it, uh, example like in some of the pictures where it has those clear, uh, like hook-like features, mm -hmm. uh, you can see it on other uh, living forms of life. Doctor, I'm becoming very scratchy sitting here tonight. <laughs> yes. You know, this may be this may be a, a crazy question, but like, at what temperature? Maybe this will tell us something. At what temperature do the fibers that uh, protrude from the skin burn at? And do they ever do they melt? Uh, we had none of them melt. Uh, we had them go as low as 600 degrees Fahrenheit to as high as 1,400 degrees that we tested. And they don't melt. No, they don't melt. They they break apart, but they're they're still all together. Holy cow. Now, and one of them broke apart, and that's what you got the golden head. Ah. Meaning gotcha. it was a complete fiber burned at the end, 1,400 degrees, and it showed um, the golden head. I think we should get Spock in here, maybe. <laughs> yeah, really. <laughs> no, this it, is it, really... One, one of my questions, though, is, okay, we've got perhaps this falling from the sky. Obviously, you, you found that it's in, in the food we eat, even seafood. How can we, do we need to build our immune systems? Well, what can help us with well, this? Well, this particular um, uh, thing uh, that we found is that it never stimulated the immune system. So in the very beginning, it's like... Um, if it doesn't stimulate the immune system because it's so small, the immune system can't send out the white blood cells and the soldiers to fight it, okay? Gotcha. So what you have to do is just basically keep your body healthy and please use good intestinal um, fiber and Jerusalem artichoke powder and other types of uh, nutrients like uh, what are being developed so that uh, you can... Um, maintain good uh, digestive health because I personally uh, think that, well, I, I know it's uh, starting in the intestinal tract, thus the uh, first organs that are formed are the GI tract. So if you can keep that, okay. so if you can keep that cleaned out then and healthy, you don't, it, it doesn't have a chance to, to grow. Assemble, correct. Assemble, Assemble correct. Yeah. Okay, I get you, I get so, you. So right. And that's with any chemical. Right. You've so got to remember that 35% of the minimum absorbs back into the intestinal tract. So keep your digestive system in good health, doctor. Uh, you know, uh, maybe some colon cleanse or uh, yogurt, live cultural yogurt will help. Correct. Right. Hemp oil, the new Doc uh, hemp fibers. You know? Perfect. Doctor, we need to say goodnight to you. Thank you. Thank you very much for having me on. What good an night. incredible we'll, bunch when, of when you get news, will you please let us know and we'll get you back on the show? Yes, because we are working on countermeasures and uh, there is hope definitely out there. Okay? Thank you. Thank, Thank, you. You. Thank you. Good Thank night. Thank you very much. Good night. Bye-bye. Well, if that doesn't creep you out, I don't know what will. Unbelievable. <laughs> I knew there was a connection between chemtrails and uh, this Morgellons. And finally, uh, a, t a leading environmental toxicologist has proven it. Good night, everybody. And remember, the truth is out there.